I'm going to jump through this wall and this wall and this wall and then finally swim on out of the map. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to escape a prison as fast as possible. That took four hours and 18 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit and today you join me in Prison Architect. That's right, we're back. Why are we back? Well, it's because the uh, lovely developers of Prison Architect released a brand new DLC and paid a whole bunch of YouTubers to play it. They, uh, they didn't pay me though. Uh, no one pays me. Not even you. Yorkshire tea. Oh no, <laughs> if only I could get some of that sweet sweet Raid Shadow Legend sponsored money. But no, instead today I'm playing Prison Architect and you might wonder why on earth am I playing a DLC which I've had to actually pay for myself and that I'm not being paid to play. Well it's because um, everyone hates it. Yes, this uh, new DLC has recently been released on Steam and it has a user review score of I think about 30% positive reviews because it is effectively £7 for two maps and a few poorly implemented features which don't particularly work, which is a real shame developers because I'm sure you guys poured a whole bunch of time into it but nonetheless I'm going to absolutely take the piss out of it because it's so easy to. So I'll be playing Prison Architect and showcasing a very silly exploit which players can do to basically cheese their way through the escape mode of this game and escape from anything. Now in today's episode we're going to escape from what I just spent £7 buying, the Alcatraz prison. This was a prison lovingly handcrafted by the developers to be similar to the real world Alcatraz prison. For that reason it's meant to be exceedingly hard to escape, a real challenge and oh my we're going to be able to get out of this bad boy oh so quickly. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea ladies and gentlemen as I'm about to demonstrate why the physical boundaries of reality have no way to stop me from escaping just about everything. So how do you think Spiff's going to escape prison today? Do you think A he's going to actually spend his time diligently digging a tunnel and slowly building up a network of prisoners to help him in his escape? Do you think B, he's just going to go on a rampage and try and punch his way through the guards? Or do you think C, he's going to somehow escape the physical realm, become an enlightened being, and phase through all objects in order to escape? Which one do you think Spiff's going to do? Make sure to go down into the comment section and place your vote, because voting is mandatory and failure not to vote will mean that you'll be sent to prison. So let's start a brand new game. Now you'll notice over here in the pre-made prison section, we can see some of the lovely pre-made prisons which Paradox has to offer the Alcatraz Island Bound, and then of course the Rock, which they've also added. Then they also added the Blackwater Incarceration for the Psych Ward DLC and the Farm as well. Now, these three prisons here are exceedingly easy to escape, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to be able to do it in a staggeringly short time as well. So, how on earth is Spiff going to escape this prison? As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, from this map, it is insane. Let me load it up and play, because then we'll be able to show off just how immense this prison is. This prison has one guard for every three prisoners. It features a multi-wall tiered system to make escape basically impossible. And even if you could escape, where on earth would you go? The island is surrounded by water. You'd have to swim for miles if you really wanted to try and get your way off of here. The easiest escape route would be to go out the main entrance, but even then you've still got to get for about 40 guards and somehow run through this snaky maze. This is the difficult thing when it comes to the prison escape mode of Prison Architect. The easiest way to escape would be to dig a massive tunnel but in order to dig a tunnel large enough you've got to start digging from say here and go all the way up here then cross the bridge I mean that would take days ladies and gentlemen hours even Now that's just time that we don't have to spend. We want to speed run this prison and escape in as short a time as possible. And trust me ladies and gentlemen, it's exceedingly easy. So let's load up escape mode and throw our prisoner into Alcatraz Island. Now the way escape mode works is it takes you from being the perspective of the warden and throws you into a randomly generated prisoner. In our case we've become Langdon. Langdon here, I've no idea what Langdon's past is like, I'm sure he's a lovely individual, but as you can see we've just arrived at the gates of the rock which is going to be a very formidable prison to escape but don't worry we're going to find a way. Now of course as soon as we arrive we get immediately grabbed by a guard and thrust through these staff gates and oh the long walk to our cell begins. I'm just going to speed up time. Now as you'll notice this game has various time features. It has regular speed then it has I think two times speed this one is. Yep this one's two times and then this one I'm pretty sure is actually around about five times and then if you want to go absolutely insanely fast this here is ten times speed ladies and 
and gentlemen. I have no idea why on earth anyone would need 10 times speed, but the game developers decided to add it. You'll notice the issue with 10 times speed though is that it's a little bit glitchy. My character is kind of rubber banding around here, and that's kind of where our exploit's going to begin. Now, it's day one for us, and it's 11 a.m. We've just arrived in our cell, and immediately we're going to not stay there. Instead, we're going to run all the way around the prison in free time and get right the way down south here to the lovely showers. Now, when you're playing a prisoner in Prison Architect, you need to get a good reputation, as having a big reputation means you're able to actually improve your character. You're able to make them stronger, tougher, deadlier, quicker, faster. You can make them an instigator, you can make them a skilled fighter, and you can even make them a swimmer. Now, how on earth are we going to gain these rep points? Well, the game would have you believe that the best way to gain rep points is to attack staff members and just generally beat up your cell. No, instead you want to make your way to the nearest shower, because if you were to hit a bed, it's going to take about seven hits before you actually gain more than one rep point. In a shower instead, every time you hit one of these shower heads, you just gain rep points. So all I'm going to do is waltz around the shower here, repeatedly beating these shower heads and gaining stupidly large amounts of rep points in a very short period of time. So I'll just keep on beating these shower heads, lovely stuff. We don't actually need many rep points at all, and in fact it's possible to escape from every prison without any rep points, but you know I like to have a little bit of an advantage on my side. So we're just going to run around here, punch a couple of shower heads, and watch the rep points flow on in. Normally in your first day in a prison, in Prison Architect, it would be quite good to get maybe 5 or 6 rep points, but by using the shower head system, you're able to gain points at a terrifying speed. This also works when it comes to beating up windows, because windows immediately get broken very quickly. I think it takes 1 to 2 hits to break a window, but a shower head is certainly the easiest thing to access. Oh, look at this lovely, we're already up to 32 rep points, which is just perfect. That's a whole bunch of rep points. And naturally, uh, no one has actually noticed what we're doing here. Even the little workmans are coming in to uh, fix this up. Oh no, there's our first police officer. He's noticed, ladies and gentlemen. Right, well, there's a couple of things we can do. We can actually escape. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that it's entirely possible to sequence break through walls by simply using the shift key, ladies and gentlemen. You see, by playing on 10 speed, you're able to jump through the walls of this actual world, which is a very unique situation to be in because it effectively allows you to escape the entire map. You'll notice we have just jumped outside of the fence here, ladies and gentlemen, and we're in the outside world. Now, sadly, I'm not able to escape the prison just yet because, as you can see, I'm not a swimmer, and so I can't go into any of this water here and escape. But you will have spotted something very strange. My character, Langdon here, managed to go from being inside a entirely walled area and just simply phase through it as if it simply didn't exist. This is very strange, isn't it, Langdon? Well, it's because the developers haven't actually optimized the engine to run at 10 times speed, which is why my character was busy rubber banding across the screen there, because yes, the game is simply not optimized for it. Now, in my case, all I need to do to escape is grab two points into Swimmer, and you know what, I've got some spare rep points lying around, so I'll pick up all of these other things. And there we go, perfect. Now our character is even stronger. And you know what, I'm going to speed up time a bit so that we actually finish our sentence of just damaging a bunch of shower heads. It's only three hours, and as soon as our sentence is complete, we'll be released. Actually, I think if I skip punishments, yes, if I skip punishments, I get fully healed, which is what I'm going to do. Now, as you can see, our character is fully healed now, and we're able to start our lovely prison escape. Day one hasn't even finished, but we're going to be able to pull it off. Now, sadly, I can't make my way inside of there because, for whatever reason, the guards have walled it off, and so I'm going to go over to an area where I know the guards aren't active, e.g. the shower, to pull off this escape. Now, all you need to do to pull off the escape is two things. You need to be in fight stance, and you need to be running the game at 10 times speed. By running the game at 10 times speed, the game engine kind of breaks, and your character achieves stupid speeds, which it shouldn't actually have access to. And by doing this kind of speed, you're able to phase through objects. Now, if you're going at 10 times speed, there's only a limited amount you can actually phase through an object. To phase through even harder, you're going to need to actually have the power of lunges on your side. You see, the lunge is an attack move which you can do in the fight stance. When you're able to lunge, suddenly you're able to throw your character a little bit into a wall, like say, so, there we go, our character does a little jump there. Now, in one time speed, this is useless, but in 10 times speed, when you build up your character a bit, you're able to actually throw yourself through a wall. Now, if we run along here in 10 times speed, we're going to be able to jump through that wall there. Now we're in the outside area, and then we can jump through that wall there, and now we're in the outer fence. Once we're in the outer fence, well, ladies and gentlemen, you know we can just jump through that fence there, and well, now we're suddenly swimming. And what we're going to be able to do just before it hits 12 p.m., we're going to simply exit the prison. And that's how to leave an entire prison 
off in just 15 hours. It's dumb. It's stupid. I love it. But I reckon I can get that time down even more. So I've loaded in with a brand new character. This here is Tot Hill. And once again, I'm going to instill the power of Yorkshire Tea within him and have him escape the prison as fast as possible. This is a speed run, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be trying to get into our cell as fast as possible and get out of the prison as fast as possible. Now, hopefully the lovely guards will watch me through as quickly as they can. There we go. Come on, give me a search and take me to my cell. I don't have all day, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. And there we go. Our adventure to our cell is suddenly progressing. We're about halfway there. Come on, guards. And there we go. Perfect. I can throw myself inside of my cell. And now that I'm in my cell, I want to run all the way straight down to the shower as fast as possible. And now that I'm in the shower, once again, I want to start gaining a couple of rep points. I only need three rep points, actually, in order to pull this off. So immediately, I'm just going to hit space to end the fight. Now, as no one saw me do any of that, I immediately get to spend my rep points. And I'm going to sink them into being a swimmer. Perfect. Now, once again, I'm going to hit that shower to start a fight and once again lunge through this wall. Perfect. There we go. Now the guards are onto me, but that's okay. They can't stop me now. I'm going to jump through this wall and this wall and this wall and then finally swim on out of the map. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how to escape a prison as fast as possible. That took four hours and 18 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. That was simply seconds, paradox. How long did you spend on this prison? How balanced did you even make the escape game mode? Because it certainly seems to me like you guys just had no idea what you were doing with this, I'm afraid. Oh my goodness, it's silly, it's fantastic, and I love it. But there are some better things we can do in terms of prison escaping, don't you worry. Now, the next prison we're going to escape from here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Farm Prison from the Psych Ward DLC, which, similar to the latest DLC, is available on Steam. The only difference is the Psych Ward DLC is only £5. Now, because it's only £5, its reviews are much better. It actually has a 63% positive review rate, and honestly, I don't even understand the DLC practice anymore for Prison Architect because this here added as many new features, in my opinion, as the Island Bound DLC. The only difference was it's £2.50 cheaper. I don't understand why anyone passed the Island Bound DLC to be as expensive as it is. It makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Ah, <sighs> nonetheless, we're going to arrive in this lovely psych ward area. Fantastic. And this time, instead of escaping the prison using my classical normal method of just phasing my way through the walls, instead I'm going to cause a nice bit of chaos because chaos at the end of the day is score. Ah, perfect. We've been dropped inside of our cell and what we're going to do is simply sleep until the next day. Lovely stuff. And now it's a brand new, lovely, fresh, open day. And immediately we're being told we should go to the shower, but actually I have no interest in that. Instead, we're going to head on up here because I'm pretty sure I spotted a staff room. Now, staff rooms are lovely because staff rooms give us access to unique items like, say, forks, cell phones, knives. But most importantly, come on, where are you? Where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. There's a lighter around here. There has to be. Oh, no, I accidentally wandered into the wrong staff room there. Ah, so this is an illegal staff room, whereas the other one was perfectly fine. A few moments later. Ah, and there we go. Fantastic. There is a lighter sat right in the middle of here, which we're going to be able to just pick up. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and that means we now have a lighter in our inventory, which is, as you can probably guess, kind of insane. Now, we're going to use the prison guards to just simply let us walk around most of the prison uh, until we get nice and close to hopefully a nice outside area. Yes, look at this. This is wonderful. And now in this nice outside area where no one can see us, we're going to be able to cause a bit of chaos. Now, you see, normally when it comes to using an item in Prison Architect, like the lighter, the lighter is rather limited. It's not the best. But with the use of a handy dandy auto clicker, ladies and gentlemen, you're able to cause some pretty terrifying fires exceedingly quickly, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set fire to the entirety of this uh, laundry room because we don't need the laundry room. It's not ours. It's not very exciting. Now, the thing with the lighter is if you have an auto clicker you can actually hold it down and phase uh, through the entirety of reality itself um, causing just general matter to break so normally if you're just clicking there's a recharge rate with the lighter but if you just hold down with your finger the fire just kind of becomes more intense now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a speed run tactic to just jump through this wall here uh, and then I've made my way up to I think a padded cell which I'm now going to once again light on fire and that should hopefully summon some lovely firemen over here, then I'll just light this on fire, and this can also be lit on fire, and oh look fantastic, a shower. Showers are brilliant because, you know, whilst technically they can dispense water, you can also just burn through them. Now the thing is, if we wanted to escape the prison, we could technically just melt our way through a wall, and then uh, we've made our way out, but honestly there's no need to do any of that when you can just instead phase your way through reality. Now around about this point, the prison is probably hitting a point where they can no longer actually manage to stop the fire, which 
is perfect for us because as we can see it's already melted a couple of holes in a few walls and already the fire has spread massively causing probably absolute chaos oh and there we go we've just immediately melted through that wall i absolutely love the fire now it, what we can do is we can actually just uh, walk through the fire here it's actually very easy to do there we go because we burnt down the wall we can just waltz on through because the wall no longer exists and now we're outside the prison which is lovely oh and here's the perimeter wall i guess we can also burn that down i don't know if we can actually melt concrete but i can certainly burn all of this outside area lovely i can also set trees on fire apparently lovely and then i guess the tree fire will probably spread to the wall and that'll probably be our best way to melt through the perimeter fence and now the lines you're probably noticing appearing on the floor that's a, technically the fire department trying to uh, work out the best way to get access over here and oh here they come hello there fire department it's lovely to see you now i can keep you mostly preoccupied by just lighting more fires everywhere including into the shower whilst most of the prisoners are busy having their shower time what's even so incredible is that i can light fires the other side of brick walls so i can set fire to all of these fridges here despite them being the other side of a solid object because once again at 10 times speed objects no longer have any matter all of these toilets here there we go they can all be set on fire and that bin inside and those tables and i'm pretty sure even this tree the other side of a wall can oh and there's a guard over there i think they probably have noticed some of the chaos i'm causing the plus side of fire is that it really upsets the pathfinding of everyone in this game so the guards aren't very good at chasing after you through fire oh but as i can see he's starting to catch up with me and so naturally i'll walk through the uh, chaos of what i've caused oh my god look at all the dead people oh god i've destroyed the prison i really have look at this monstrosity well let's skip our punishments and see what the following day looks like ah lovely right i'm just going to make my way over to the side of the prison which i kind of accidentally burnt down no they're actually doing quite a good job over here look at that there's only a handful of exceedingly dead people over here anyway it's now a brand new day we've got a whole bunch of sleep on our side and we're going to be able to walk through the prison and see some of the chaos we've caused pretty sure over here yep uh naturally most of the walls are technically melted out here so uh, we can just walk on through there and now we're outside the prison and now that we're outside the prison technically at any point we can just escape by walking up to this wall here and hitting shift and there we go game over oh my goodness this game why on earth is it allowed <sighs> please developers come on like i understand you need to make seven pound dlc of an island map but what about what about just taking a little bit of that dlc mate just a little bit and just you know bug fixing um and not having the escape mode work like this maybe considering it's one of the most popular and fun features about the game the fact that you can build this glorious and lovely prison and then you can try escaping from it yourself maybe actually adding a little bit of extra fun to it would make sense i don't know it's i mean it's your game so i'm not going to judge you do whatever you like but i just think it's a really big missed opportunity anyway there we have it today ladies and gentlemen i think all that's left is i should probably leave my own review for the fantastical dlc so let's do that ah oh, write a review for prison architect island bow do you recommend this game? Yes. I loved spending £7 and 19 pence to gain access to this lovely DLC. My favourite feature is the new ferry and pier system, which allows for the mind-numbingly slow transport of prisoners on and off the island. The best part of this is that it only allows a few prisoners to be transported, leading to massive queues of hundreds of prisoners. I love queuing. As a British person, nothing brings more happiness than a line of important people waiting for hours to make no progress in a column of stagnant corpses just trying to board a tiny boat. I love that when you add a second pier, nothing changes as they queue based on proximity rather than wait time, which is, you know, such a such a brilliant enlightening gameplay feature, which um, I, I honestly thought I wouldn't see after the 1990s, but, you know, apparently it still comes into modern management games. Oh, God, Prison Architect, you have this feature for other parts of your game. Why does it not work here? All in all, I love this DLC and recommend it to all of my four friends. That satisfying feeling of being punched by DLC in the kidneys never gets old. 11 out of 10, better than The Last of Us 2. And post. There we go. I can't wait for everyone to really enjoy my review of this. Anyway, that's all for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea and I need a sit down after spending all that money on DLC. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and if you're new here, then do consider subscribing. We'd absolutely love to have you on board. I'm not really too sure about what to do for future videos. I think I have a couple of fun Skyrim ideas.
ideas lined up, but beyond that there's also other games which need to be exploited like say Civilization and heck maybe even one day Cyberpunk 2077 when in 50 years time it eventually gets released. As always a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously without you guys it would be a lot more challenging to get a stable income so thank you very much. And if you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next well look no further than this one on screen now hand chosen by myself to be perfect for all of you wannabe escapists who want to break out of jail. Well I've got you sorted. Anyway I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day my friends and I'm afraid it's goodbye for now.